Hey guys and welcome to another episode of UA Eats. I'm UA and I am in downtown Brooklyn right now eating at one of the most iconic restaurants in the whole city. I'm here in downtown Brooklyn to eat at the original location of Junior's. Junior's has been around since the 1950s. Uh, it's been around for about, I guess, 74 years or so at this point, and it's been so successful that there's a few locations. There's two in Midtown Manhattan, I believe one in Times Square, in addition to the flagship location. It's called Junior's Restaurant and Bar, and this is kind of like a diner. It's a diner with some Ashkenazi Jewish influence, so it's a diner, but they sell a lot of Jewish deli classics, such as pastrami and the like. And corned beef and things such as that. But while I hear some of their deli classics are pretty good, particularly the pastrami I hear is not bad here, what really put this place on the map is their cheesecake. People from, you know, princes to people like Obama have made stops here. So for more than 70 years, their cheesecake has stood the test of time. So let's, uh, let's see if it still does. Let's check it out. Although let's try not to get run over while we go on this cheesecake quest, why don't we? Jaywalking, an essential New Yorker skill. Thank you. Okay, so we're here inside Junior's and uh, this restaurant has all the makings of your typical East Coast diner. Uh, we've eaten at many diners in New Jersey, so uh, the interior is nothing new to us except for how large this diner is. Most diners are not quite this big. Uh, I just love these diner atmospheres, so casual and approachable. Pretty interesting that they have disco fries, uh, another diner classic, particularly in New Jersey. And as I mentioned, the Ashkenazi Jewish roots are showing with matzo ball soup. And if you scroll down, you see that they have a whole Reuben section, as well as all sorts of traditional sandwiches. But to be honest, while it's a pretty big menu, it's not as big as I was expecting. You know, some of these diner menus can be quite large and while this is obviously going to be a bigger menu than at all those fancy restaurants in the West Village, uh, this is still relatively small I think as far as diner menus go. Actually I guess it's a little bit bigger than I'm giving it credit for since I guess the font is kind of just really small so it's more stuff than it looks like. Yep, that's the end. For lunch, let's zero in on this deli section. Corned beef, pastrami, brisket, all of my favorite things. And for pretty reasonable prices, I'm sure these were all much lower pre-inflation. Maybe let's try this lunch combination, available 11 through 4, Monday through Friday. Today is Monday through Friday between 11 and 4. And it looks like for this, you get a half sandwich and you also get a salad and you can add a soup. And in this case, I want a matzo ball soup. But the sandwich is on a roll? I don't want a roll, I want a, a rye bread. You know, a roll, uh, I don't know, that's not really my thing, so. Let's find out if we can get a piece of rye bread instead of the roll. Otherwise, I would rather order it at full price because I want to give you guys the best pastrami experience and, you know, not like a more budget one. Question, this uh, lunch combination uh, it says half sandwich on a roll. Could I get rye bread instead? Yes. Oh, oh, great. Uh, all right, so let me do a pastrami, pastrami? Uh, on rye. Yeah. Uh, and I guess the mustard is apply myself. Yeah. Okay. All right, so yeah, I'll do the half sandwich on a roll and uh, I'll do a matzo ball cup. And I'll hang on to this for the cheesecake later. So. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, they offered to give me rye bread instead of the roll. Very nice of them, and a very, very friendly server, I gotta say. Very pleasant and very friendly. Just wanna show you real quick, before we order the cheesecake later, this place is so known for cheesecakes that they have a whole huge section basically primarily made up of cheesecakes. They have some ice cream floats and shakes as well, but ooh, Mountain High Sunday sounds up my alley as well, but really got to go with the cheesecakes here. What really put this place 
on the map and so thoughtful of them to include a diabetic-friendly cheesecake. While they have lots of flavors that look pretty good, Oreo cheesecakes, Devil's Food cheesecakes, and uh, strawberry shortcake sounds the bomb, as well as carrot cake, I think we gotta go with their original cheesecake leader. Although I just gotta say that these cheesecakes are not cheap, so we'll hold off on that later uh, after lunch. Thank you. Uh, I'll be okay. You know, to be honest, the soup size is much larger than I was expecting. They said a cup of soup. I was expecting more like a like a small cup, but this is basically like a smaller bowl. So <laughs> I feel like their full size matzo ball soup must be much larger than this. But I gotta say, all things considered, not a bad lunch special. The uh, sandwich is a tad smaller than I was hoping for. For 1825, I will concede I was expecting a bigger sandwich. I actually would have preferred a bigger sandwich and a smaller soup, but it's okay. It's looking pretty juicy. Wow, looks like there's a birthday party going on, so we're gonna have to... Happy birthday to you. We're gonna have to, you know, wait until this is over to finish filming. <laughs> But yeah, I'm liking the color of the pastrami. I'm liking the spicy looking bark on all sides. Nice juicy looking color. But before we try the sandwich, we're gonna have to try the soup. So let's give this a try. First, the broth. And at first glance, the broth could be a little bit more clear. It's a little bit yellowy for me. Yeah, I would say not the best matzo ball soup broth I've had. It is a little bit, mm, the chicken flavor is kind of less pure than I would have liked. It does taste a little bit, mm, almost like the broth is kind of powder based. You really want these matzo ball soups to be more clear. And luckily when I bring it to the surface with a spoon, it looks more clear. But when I return it to whence it came, it's uh, you know more dark colored and I don't know. Like it's nice and oily and that's nice, but I get the sense that they're adding like a powder, maybe like a MSG or something. You know, you don't really taste great chicken flavor. It's more like an artificial chicken flavor, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's okay, that's only okay. Let's try some noodles though. Maybe that will help. Actually, the noodles are actually decent, you know, better than I was expecting. Too often in these matzo ball soups, even good matzo ball soups I've had, the noodles are way overcooked and basically mushy, but these actually have a bit of al dente to them. Not sure if that means that they're just using a better brand of noodles than other matzo ball soups, or if they're just not overcooking the noodle, but I dig it. But it's time, yeah, it's time to try the matzo ball itself. And uh, I have high hopes for the matzo ball. Let's try another piece of this. So I'll say what I like about it. The matzo ball is definitely not bland. You know, oftentimes matzo balls can be a little bit bland, a little bit lacking in salt. Maybe they just assume that you're gonna salt it yourself at the table, but in this case, not so much. The matzo ball is well seasoned. It's not lacking in sodium. And because of that, you know, every bite is not bland and I like that. I do like that it kind of acts as like a sponge for the soup, you know, soaking in that chicken soup and every bite kind of feels like a delicious chickeny sponge. However, while I do like that aspect, that aspect is also another thing that I don't like in like a contradiction, you might say. Because it's soaking up so much of the soup, it's sort of too squishy, you know, like it's sort of too soft and wet. Let me see if I can sort of show you, but as you can see, while just look at all the soup that it soaked up, but 
it's also rather soggy as a result. So double-edged sword, you might say. So <laughs> it's actually kind of funny from this angle, it almost looks like mashed potatoes or French vanilla ice cream. It's not bad. I mean, I like that it's well seasoned, but not my favorite, I would say. Decent portion, I will say that for lunch special, but it's time to move on to the sandwich. Uh, let's see, how can I grab this in one piece? That was actually easier than I thought. Bite number one of the promising looking pastrami sandwich. Ooh, I love it when a sandwich tastes exactly the way it looks. That is fantastic. I guess I did opt for the lunch special, so, you know, I guess they only gave me half of the sandwich and compared to Katz's Deli, which is, you know, Katz's Deli is like this, but two halves and maybe that much more. You know, I get it. It was cheaper. It was not exactly 28 bucks just for one sandwich. So you're getting what you pay for, but the quality is not being lost, even if the quantity is. That pastrami is just so fatty and like evenly fatty, if that makes sense. Be gone, steak. You're getting in my way. Yeah. But yeah, when I open it, I mean, just look at how beautiful this pastrami looks. Like, it almost kind of reminds me of the Langer's pastrami in color. Some of these pastrami sandwiches, like you'll have unrendered bits of fat here and there, which tastes kind of nice, but you know, become kind of unpleasant after a while. But this one is evenly fatty. Like, see, I'm not seeing any unrendered stray pieces of fat anywhere. Everything is just even and delicious. The whole thing just like comes apart in your mouth so easily. Like, look at how easy it is for me to just take this guy apart. Just comes apart in your mouth, barely any chewing required. And the spicy bark, the spicy edges, add a nice contrast to the fatty, beefy pastrami. Fantastic. And of course, how could you not love that amazing pastrami color? The Michelin star chefs all say that you eat with your eyes first. And if something doesn't look good, you're psychologically not going to think it tastes good. I personally think that's an over reduction and an oversimplification, but I do think that there is some merit to it and that when food has a delicious shine and a delicious juicy look, it's like a placebo effect almost in a way. Like it looks good, so your brain processes it as good. Honestly, this pastrami sandwich is looking and tasting very fantastic. It's well balanced, juicy and delicious. So I almost think it doesn't even need anything else. My hands are oily from touching the beef directly, but Let's try adding some of the mustard and see if that either adds anything or takes away. Let's add some mustard and see if that helps. I might not have added enough, so let's, uh, let's at least spread some more towards the front. Guys, I'm using my left hand and I'm holding my uh, phone in my right hand, so spreading <laughs> mustard with your non-dominant hand, harder than you would suspect. There you go. Let's see if the mustard amplifies things. So time for another glorious bite of Junior's very Junior sandwich. Ah, I still wish it were larger, even though it's a lunch special. You know what? Even though pastrami and rye and mustard is like a classic combination, I kind of think that it doesn't really need the mustard in this case, although the mustard is quite nice. For me, in this case, um, the mustard is a little bit strong and the pastrami is just so fatty and juicy and delicious. And I don't think it really needs any more spice. It kind of just distracts from how good the sandwich already is. Furthermore, the mustard is a uh, kind of cold, if I can be honest. Believe it or not, um, it's not cold in the room at all. I mean, if it were cold, I would be wearing my hat, but it's not cold in the room at all. It's actually like a perfect temperature, but for some reason, the mustard is cold. Maybe they put it in the refrigerator earlier, but it does kind of sort of ruin a good thing, if that makes sense. So I don't think the mustard is necessary. The pastrami alone is just juicy, fatty, and delicious.
Mmm. So good. Cleaned house on this guy. Ate the whole thing. Mmm. To be honest, this place is mostly known for their cheesecake, but this pastrami sandwich was fantastic. Uh, I mean, if you don't want to wait in those long lines at Katz's Deli, and if you don't want to feel pressure to eat like a humongous head-sized sandwich all by yourself, I came in here with maybe not the highest expectations for their pastrami sandwich because we've had so many good ones on this channel, but honestly, Junior's is a pretty good option, so maybe something to think about. But it is now time for the climax of this video, what we all came here for, or at least the main thing I came here for. We're gonna try the cheesecake, which is what put this place on the map. So I'm gonna use my YouTuber headline voice. Let's see if the Junior's cheesecake is worth the hype. That's how I always imagined that in my head when I was typing it. Excellent, thank you. All right. That is a nice, pretty thick looking, uh, you know, larger portion than I was expecting, but a nice fluffy and pretty nice looking cheesecake, if you ask me. Bom, 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 bana. Oops. Wow. I almost dropped it on the table. Don't worry, no harm, no foul. It just landed on its side and it didn't split or crack or anything. But I love that it's a generous slice. It was expensive, nine bucks, but at least you sort of get your money's worth. Like just to show you how tall it is, similar height as the matzo ball soup cup. Although on a plate, of course, but you get my meaning. Up until this point, my favorite cheesecake was the cheesecake at Gallagher Steakhouse. That so far is the best cheesecake I've had, so. We'll see if Junior's changes my mind. Let's try another bite. Hmm. It's definitely good. Maybe my expectations were just too high. It's good. I wouldn't say it's like a extremely out of this world good cheesecake. Um, I don't know, maybe I just have different taste. Maybe there's different things that I like about the other cheesecakes that I've had that I liked. I mean, it's not bad, but I feel like it's not one of my favorites. Now, I do like the generous portion. I do like how tall it is. I do like the big generous slice, although I guess I just wish that it was a little bit more fluffy. Like this one is a little dense and not super fluffy and airy. Like. I really gotta exert some effort to push through it, and maybe that's what people like. Maybe they like that it's rich and thick and decadent, but this one is a little bit too dense for me. It's good for sure, but I feel like I've had cheesecake of this caliber before. I've had friends make homemade cheesecake before. Like they make their own cheesecake from cream cheese and it sort of tastes like this. Like it's very, very similar in consistency and in flavor. I don't know though, I guess in this case, uh, I guess I was hoping for like a flavor that's harder to replicate at home. Uh, like a more fluffy, difficult to achieve texture as opposed to like something that like my friend made in his dorm room, so. It's good, don't get the wrong idea. It's still decent, like it's not bad or anything. It's still decent, uh, although it is quite thick at how hard it is to cut. I guess maybe my expectations were too high, but I don't think that the cheesecake here is anything special, to be honest. I've had better ones at other restaurants, and you know, they might not have the legendary iconic cheesecake status, but I've preferred some other ones that I've had over this one, but that could mostly just be my opinion. Maybe I just have different tastes. Maybe cheesecake enthusiasts will tell me, no, you want it to be not fluffy. You want it to be more dense. Maybe that's the way you know it's a good cheesecake or something. So if you think I'm dead wrong, obviously let me know in the comments. All in all though, guys, overall, I still had a really good meal here. Uh, not everything was perfect. The pastrami though, far exceeded my expectations. That was really, really good. I would even put that among like the top 10 pastrami's I've had in the city so far. Very, very good. So if you come here, 
get a full sandwich because half a sandwich was not enough, you're gonna want the second half for sure. But anyways, guys, I think that's gonna be it for this video. I'm glad I got to come here to Junior's, such an iconic restaurant, uh, one of the most famous diners in the whole city of New York. Have you been to Junior's before? Did you think that the cheesecake lived up to the hype? Let me know in the comments because great minds eat alike. If you like my videos, make sure you like and subscribe. That way you stay up to date whenever I post another video. Still gonna finish this for sure. So, oops, if I can pick it up. So until next time, I'll see you later.